you said that you are a walk-in, but who was that soul that was there before? Yeah, um, I really couldn't tell you who that soul was that was there before, um, because it's one of those things that when you when you're when you have the opportunity, and it's a process, it's a spiritual process. When you have the opportunity to come in, you don't really integrate with that soul. Um, you just integrate with the information that that soul acquired while it was still in the womb. That's all, all you do. See, the, the, the interesting thing here, and I'm going to kind of jump around a little bit, but the interesting thing here is that part of this has to do with, with what these things are, our bodies, okay? And, and our bodies are just extremely advanced intelligence, technology. And so when I say I integrate it with this body, I, I literally mean that when I came in, I, I sort of connected myself into the database of this body so that I would understand what what was going on for those nine months that that this child was was in the womb and even the six months that the soul was in this life. And so I just integrated it and it, it was so seamless that I took on many of the characteristics of this person, but most walk-ins do that, but they always feel like I did, like this suit didn't fit very accurately. And, and so it took me a while to understand why it didn't fit me so well. And it was because, because it wasn't my original suit. It was somebody else's. I was going to say something about walk-ins, but I, <laughs> I forgot now. But but um, but what I do want to say about a walk-in experience is what I said just a few minutes ago. Uh, walk-ins are here for specific reasons, and now, especially now in human history, there are more walk-ins coming in because, in some ways, they are coming in the same way that others are coming in through channeling. You know, when people channel other beings from other dimensions, except my, so I don't necessarily come from a, <laughs> from a dimension because I come from the angelic world. Um, and the angelic world doesn't have dimensions like this. And it's really, I'm going to try to keep it very simple, but you know how in some, okay, so for anybody who's kind of Christian or was raised like that, they talk about angels coming from from source and they were never really never really experienced this life of evolution of a spirit um, most walk-ins are are angelic beings they they don't have wings but but they come directly from source so in the past many of them would have been considered prophets um, and so that's basically what we are but how I, I get curious how do you know that that's true that you are uh, first a walk-in and then also that you come from this other realm because that I mean is that an experience that you yes. have do you remember the angelic realm and like that yes. your identity really yes um yes yes and all yes 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 <laughs> um first of all since that experience with the near death much of my my visions and experiences have been to go back into that to that near death and remember more things that happen. So that's what I initially remember from the near death experience. And this actually is true for many near death experience people. They don't remember everything that happened when they were there. So I remember being in the Akashic room where the this beautiful sort of library of, of where you literally stick your head into a book and you remember everything about the universe. So I, I know a lot of, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not a physicist, but I can tell you much about quantum physics and about the, the about uh, laws of entanglement and things like that, just because it's, it's what we are in terms of the other world. So I've had experiences like that. I've gone in to that realm multiple times to have more clarity as to what exactly I saw when I saw um, all these light beings in in that orb. I, if you remember, I was told to to explain what I saw. And so one of the things that I saw, the big thing that I saw after going back again and remembering it was that it was this remembering of who we are. And at that, and what I mean by that is that I remember that a, a very powerful 
message that I've been telling people, which is to say that we are not, we are not necessarily the, the children of God. We, we did not, God did not create us like we have been told many, many times in different ways. We collectively as powerful spiritual beings came together and created God, not the other way around. And that is huge. And so then how do you know all this? Well, it's a little bit of fact finding and people telling me. So I was explaining this to people and I would get people telling me, do you know that this book says this and this book says this and the Bible says this? And so this was a really interesting story because somebody emailed me and said, do you know that in the Bible, it, 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 it talks about, about creation and stuff. And so I had a vision one, one day about a specific verse and it was, and I'm not a Bible person. Okay. But there was a verse and I believe it was Genesis, uh, chapter one, verse 26, I believe, I believe, but it talks about the creation of humanity. And what's interesting about that verse, if I have it correct, but it's in there. Okay. Is that the verse talks about God in the plural, we, us created humanity in our image. It was there all the time. And so I've been, I would get various people and various, various visions or downloads about where to find information that I was, that I was just spewing out. And one of the things was the walk-in. The walk-in was something that I had known since I was very little, but I didn't really understand it. So I was taken into a vision, into a room where I saw how a walk-in evolves into, into a body. And, it, and it, it, it wasn't anything spectacular. I just literally switched, switched bodies with the being that decided to stay. And so I knew about walk-ins before I even knew that there was even a thing called walk-ins. But later on, I, I was able to explain it easier for people. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's just quite magnificent. But I, I'm... I'm open and uh, I, I first started hearing about it through Dolores Cannon. I was reading uh, one of her books and I was like, that is a concept I haven't heard about. And naturally what happens then is that it pops up all over the place. And I was thinking one day I have to interview a walk-in and here you are. <laughs> and I didn't even know it when I started writing to you. I thought we were going to speak about NDE. Um, so I get curious, do you then, do you then remember your life prior, like a pre-birth memory before you walked into uh, this uh, soul or this body? Like, do you, do you remember how the angelic realm uh, was? Most walk-ins are from the angelic realm. And uh, so we don't come here very often. Um, some people, many people who are here, I'm sure you've interviewed people that talk about this, but some people or many people, I keep saying some, but many people um, have many, many lives here, many hundreds, thousands. Okay. And, and, and people, one time I try to do the math and I go, how's it possible that one person could have thousands of lives? Okay. There's a reason for how that happens, which has to do with how your spirit can split into different, into different experiences. But, but a walk-in does not. A walk-in does not come in and have thousands of experiences. A walk-in has a very specific role. In this case, the group of walk-ins that I came with, we came in to help to help develop this school, this earth school, um, and then watch it grow into what it did with a specific lesson that everybody had to remember. I have to stress, nobody learns anything here. Everything's about remembering, okay? And so walk-ins like me, we've only been here maybe about maybe about a dozen times. And it's always been very specific times in human history. At the beginning of this school, way back 10,000 years ago, and I do remember that, that time, I remember coming through the rocks of a portal in South America and, and speaking to the indigenous people there. Um, to later on when I was in Egypt and developing the mystery schools um, to to now, um, to the time of Yeshua, to the time to now, which the now is that we are at, we are at the end of, of this earth school. I mean, we're not ending, 
we are at the end. We are really at the end. I cannot stress that enough. To watch the full video, click the link below, and I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel.